Good morning, Facebook. Hello, everybody. Hello, YouTube, Facebook, wherever else you're catching this from. It is Monday, July 26th. Monday, July 26th, about 8.40 in the morning here. And, um, yeah, out. there's my live notification. Day, July. And that's a sound check. All right. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, busy weekend here. Roma time, long weekend, uh, lots of catering parties, um, as we have been doing a lot of catering lately. Um, so uh, we've been catering at the Airbnb, doing catering here at the restaurant, we've been doing parties to go, um, and at other Airbnbs, so that's really, really awesome. Um, let's see, good morning, Joel. Uh, if you're dropping in, just say hello to us. Just drop a comment, say hashtag live. If you're tuning in live, if it's on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, here in uh, here in New York, it looks like it's going to be another beautiful day. It's going to, I think, I'll get up into like almost low 90s. I'm going to go for a bike ride here pretty soon. Um, I have a bunch of construction happening at the Airbnb this week. Uh, we don't have any guests this week. Uh, we should have to get some stuff done in the pool, um, pavers and things like that. So we're working on all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. The restaurant um, changed our menu up last week a little bit. Um, added a couple of things, added some pizzas to the menu. Those thin crust pizzas are a huge hit that we've been doing forever. Uh, so we just added the fig and bacon to the, um, to the menu, fig, bacon, and arugula. And we just added the shrimp scampi one to the menu. Uh, it was on the, the farm hub website this morning. And oh my gosh, there is an insane amount of stuff available right now. Um, I was like a kid in a candy store buying stuff this morning, green beans and, cheeses and all these kinds of things that are mushrooms that are coming locally um there's a really great supply of things year round from our local farms but right now it's just like we're in peak season i mean i can buy from corn from six different local farms it's fantastic um broccoli rob tomatoes of tomatoes we're getting in this week i'm really excited about that several different farms of tomatoes we're getting in more that's going to be on the menu um, Alaskan halibut's coming in this week. I'm thinking I'm going to put Alaskan halibut on the menu. Or sablefish, one or the other. People have been asking, so I think we're going to do it. Um, so, um, there's a lot of fresh summer flavors. So I wanted to talk about bread, uh, baking bread really quickly. Because I just got this question asked the other day to me, which is why I'm talking about this. Some of you may know this already, and some of you may not. Um, but there are different types of flours. Uh, there's cake flour, all-purpose flour, and bread flour. Most people at home um, will use all-purpose flour, and all-purpose flour is a mixture of bread and cake flour, and the gluten is down, and and you know, so it's 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 a mixture of both. It's all-purpose is what it says. All-purpose. It'll work for pancakes. It'll work to make a chocolate cake, and will work if you want to make pizza dough at home. Um, but is it ideal for bread? And the answer is no. It's not ideal for bread. So. Um, before I talk about the best flour for bread, I just want to talk about how flour is, some of the downfalls of flour that you go to buy in the store. Um, I have several of you who come to me for flour because we buy it from a um, uh, local uh, flour mill uh, from Don Miller, uh, Wild, Hive, Wild Hive Farms over in the Poughkeepsie area. And I have some polenta coming from him this week, some stone ground polenta. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting Don well over a decade ago and doing some video work with him where I was on his videos and we did this thing with, with Green Beans TV here in the Hudson Valley with him. And and um, Don is very, very passionate about flour and uh, fresh flour specifically, like the right flour and the fresh flour for the job. Um, so he recommends that none of you buy flour uh, that's going to last more than two, three months at home in your refrigerator. Flour is something that, can be, that should be extremely freshly ground properly stored and I can guarantee you you walk into ShopRite, Walmart, Hannaford, you walk in even into Whole Foods, you walk into those stores and buy a whole wheat flour, almost guarantee you that that flour is oxidized and rancid right off the bat. And he explains that celiac is is really propelled by rancid old flour. Um, and that's one of the things that will make celiac worse and make people have sensitivities to flour when they didn't have sensitivities to flour or gluten previously. So if you buy from Wild Hive Farms, he's very strict about, about making sure that you're buying only the amount of flour you need for the month. And then you want more, you buy more and they grind it freshly. So when I go on the farm hub, he literally has like 
five five pounders of bread flour, five five pounders of this flour, um, five five pounders of because it's all freshly ground and 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 the orders are taken. Uh, polenta too, it's 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 not something you just grind and store. But when you come to commercial food production, all this wheat is harvested once a year. It's put in silos. It's set out. It's aging. Um, and this is one of the reasons why wheat has what's called mycotoxins on it. Mycotoxins are linked to cancer. Um, and it's because wheat is a storage crop. The more mycotoxins in your food, the more relevancy of certain cancers, cancers you can get. Um, so mycotoxins, uh, it's just part of the storage process of, of the wheat. So then by the time you store it, non-temperature control, then by the time you grind it, package it, it sits on pallets, it sits in a warehouse, and it sits on the store shelf, it's quite old flour. So um, find a flour mill that's close to you that will uh, that will grind your fresh flour if you're really serious about getting high quality flour. And um, it costs more, but it's well, well worth it. So now um, that's the flour that we would order if we ordered flour here at the restaurant. And this is the flour that a lot of you have been buying from us since we opened up the market um, in COVID, from COVID last year in March. Somebody says, I want flour, I want this, I want that. We typically can get, that's what we get you when we get flour. So. Now, what's the difference or what's the best flour to use for bread? Because a lot of you are at home using all-purpose or using, you know, a whole wheat or whatever, but it's all per you mix whole wheat into it, but basically using all-purpose. So when I was just at a restaurant like a month ago that I actually asked the restaurant, like, like is this gluten-free, this bread, or what's, what's, because the bread, here's what happens. So gluten is the main thing that structures bread. Bread needs gluten. Gluten is the building block or, the, or, or, or which gives a structure. So when you pull a piece of bread and has that elasticity to it, that's the gluten. You could never take a piece of chocolate cake and pull it and have that elasticity. If you do that with a piece of chocolate cake, something's very, very, very wrong with that chocolate cake. All right? So chocolate cake crumbles, it falls apart, right? Bread doesn't crumble and fall apart. So I was actually at a restaurant and the bread was crumbling and falling apart. And I was like, this is really weird. I wonder what kind of flour is this freshly baked bread? Is this gluten free bread? Like, like what? What? And of course, I asked the server, and I didn't. Get, I didn't get a real answer. He goes, I don't know. Um, which, if it's important, you know, I like we like to train our staff. I don't know, but it's important, so I'll go find out, right? So go get the answer. So he's like, I, I don't know, um, but I was very curious because the bread just crumbled and fell apart. I'm like, there's no gluten here to hold it together. So you want to buy, if you're baking bread at home and you want to bake a higher quality bread, you want to buy specifically bread flour, bread flour that is higher gluten. And there's all kinds of tips and tricks that you can do to get more flavor in your bread, to get more of that, 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 um, that, that, that flexibility, that plot, you know, that, that what makes bread bread, um, by, by beating it more, um, kneading it more, um, with certain, you know, ways, ways you can do different yeasts in it, um, starters, things like that, uh, or called a poolish. So one of the best bread books that I bought years and years and years ago, when I lived in Colorado, I bought this book in probably 97 or 98. Um, it's here somewhere on the shelf. Um, is the Bread Alone Cookbook. Dan Leader's book on bread is a fantastic book. Um, it's one of, the, one of the most well-known bread books out there, and um, it's a classic. Um, he wrote that in the 90s. And I was in Colorado, living in Colorado, and I bought that book. And he's right here, right? He was right. He's right here in Kingston now, Lake Katrine, previous you know, towards Woodstock. And I learned so much from that book on making starters, on on letting bread rest and, and kneading it, and the elasticity and the gluten and all that kind of stuff. It is like if you're into bread, that's one of the books I definitely recommend to doing. Um, at one point, I was so much into bread. I had a twenty year old, um, I had a twenty year old starter, twenty year old old yeast from a friend of mine, Peter Burley, who was a chef at. Um, Angelica Kitchen. He was a chef at Angelica Kitchen years ago, and he had a starter from them. He gave this to me in like 99, uh, 2000, 2001, 2001, he gave this to me. Um, he goes, Marcus, here's the yeast we've been using at Angelica Kitchen. This is like a 15, 20 year old yeast. And I had it for a couple of years, and um, the walk in went out one time at the, at, the, at the hotel, at the country club I was at, which it often went out. It was an old walk in, two old walk ins. And my staff threw away the, didn't get it transferred my mess, my staff threw away this yeast, um, the starter. Um, so the idea of a starter is you're adding flour and you're taking out some of the already fermented yeast. So it's like a Solera. If you ever heard the term Solera and when it comes to Madeira or Port, Madeira really, Solera Port or like Hillrock makes a Solera bourbon. So basically 
they would take this massive batch of their first run bourbon and what they do is they take a little bit out and put it in a new batch well this the original batch could be 20 years old so they take a little bit out they put it in their new but at the old the old batch is 20 years old they top it off a little bit so you're consistently adding a little bit and taking adding and taking adding and taking and so there's so the idea is that you're always going to have a portion of it in there that's going to be 20 years old or 15 years old or 10 years old. So it's a Solera, and that's that that's what that term means. So Solera happens, um, it's sort of like that with yeast. You're hoping that your starter is always going to have a certain part of the age stuff, which has the complexities in it, the nuttiness, the flavors, um, all the good stuff in it, and you're adding to it and you're taking, adding and taking, adding and taking. So I had this yeast that was literally like 15, 20 years old from Angelica Kitchen. Uh, my friend Peter gave it to me. And I was baking bread really seriously at one point. And, and at home, I was doing it at home a lot. I would take a cast iron Dutch skillet, a Dutch cast iron pan with the pot, with the lid on and dimples inside. And I don't know if Peter taught me this. I think Peter taught me this. Um, I, had, I, I had met Peter in one of his classes um, in the city. And we immediately became friends. Because um, uh, we both thought very, very the same on food and nutrition and health. And, and we're in that same realm. And we had a lot of mutual friends. So Peter and I immediately connected. One of the classes I think I took from him, he would take these cast iron Dutch ovens, pop it in the oven, turn your oven on, your home oven on for 500 degrees. 500 degrees, get this thing super, super, super hot. Take your bread that's proofed, your dough that's proofed, and place it into the pot. Lid on it and back into the oven for like 45 minutes. And the crust, the crust that would come on this bread. Now the crust is also a matter of the humidity the moisture, right, the humidity and moisture, and also a matter of the yeast you're using, the better quality, older yeast, you know, that helps with the form, form the crust. Um, but of course, this all cannot be accomplished with all-purpose flour or with cake flour, nonetheless. It has to be a high gluten, specifically bread flour. And you get different grinds like Zero Zero, which is what, you know, the prized uh, one they use for pizza and pizza dough. Um, zero Zero bread flour is perfectly, perfectly fine. It's just the, the way they grind it, um, so smaller ground absorbs more. Um, more elasticity things like that so this cast iron pot would go into the oven for literally 45 minutes with your dough in it making this beautiful bread and the dimples on the top would actually would actually collect the water and then let sort of like distribute the, 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 the condensed water back onto the bread which if you know anything about cooking in ovens um, and bread ovens some of these bread ovens have steam injectors to get this crust on it they have steam injectors so it's it's very very hard to get these a uh, hard crust these great crusts on bread that does not use the good yeast you have to have a good poolish a good starter you have to have aged yeast you just can't open up a thing of fleischmann's and be able to do that and at one point i was talking to somebody who had owned a bakery and we were using the bread alone he goes he, he was marcus we can we can make bread just like bread alone i'm like you can and then this bakery wasn't known for it there's a lot of bakers in the Hudson Valley, right and this baker wasn't known for it i'm like your baker knows how to do that you have a yeast he goes no my my baker just said you leave it in the oven longer and i'm like oh boy it's not a matter of leaving it in the oven longer there's a lot of complexities that go into making high quality artisanal bread and i gotta tell you the Hudson valley has a lot of high quality artisanal bread now everything from you know um hawthorne valley bakery there's a lot of great bakeries um of course dan leader from Bread alone has led the way here in the Hudson Valley for several decades, a couple decades here, three decades, four decades, however long he's been doing it. And it's just, you know, for the volume that they're doing and the scale, they are making an amazing, amazing product, all organic. Um, you know, organic flowers, I like organic flour because it has no bromide. It's not an unbromiated uh, bromide is something you don't want in your food. Um, so we have a policy here at the restaurant to always buy unbromiated flour, which costs more. Uh, it's one of the costs, the costs for that we that we you know we inherit, um, but unbromated flour. So, uh, but the bottom line is, if you want flour, check out um, check out Wild Hive. Go to their website. You can order from them. Um, if you know something, you want something from us through Wild Hive, we get every week. We can get every week from Wild Hive. It arrives on Wednesday. We order on Mondays. My cutoff time is Tuesday. This is my cutoff time is Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. The truck goes out at six. They pick up the products and they bring it to me Wednesday. This is how the, the One Farm Hub works that we use. And I can get, I mean, my my bill, my, my invoice this week is massive with the Farm Hub. I was looking through all these tomatoes, and all these vegetables, and all these things. I'm like, oh my gosh, and the cheeses, um, especially all the in-season stuff. Um, so I uh, uh, had lots and lots of choices of specific farmed uh, farms of corn, um, organic. We're getting this week corn from a local place. 
um, integrated pest management. Um, there's all kinds of cool things that are coming out of Hudson Valley. So yeah, so that's a tip on bread. Um, if you want to bake bread, those are a few tips on bread. Jump into a book, get Dan Leader's book, uh, bread, the Bread Alone book, uh, or any other really good bread book out there. So that's the story with that. Um, that is it, folks. I don't know the 999 special this week. I haven't done a 999 special this week. Um, it's just been crazy. Um, we are no longer allowed to sell alcohol to go. That happened, um, you know, beginning in July, July 5th. We they got that taken away. I'm gonna actually start making some phone calls here to some local wineries and distilleries, and see if see if we can start getting maybe some talks with some legislation to go through to the state that allow restaurants to keep selling wine and spirits to go. Um, I would like to say, you know, limit our sales, maybe 10% of our overall sales when we can do this. Or I'd like to say, you know what, if a restaurant's supporting a local bourbon or whatever, then let them sell a bottle of local bourbon. Let them sell a New York State farmed distillery product, a farmed winery product. Let them be able to sell something that's local and promote so people can walk in. So I'm going to start talking to some people who like are on these um in these organizations and these lobbying organizations that represent that, are rep that can be represented on a state level maybe get the bug in their ear to uh to maybe we can start talking about this and having our our, our state representatives at least open to something like that so it'd be nice if you can come here and buy a bottle of hill rock bourbon from us um or a bottle of new york state wine um, a bottle of new york vodka uh from all new york products so that would be um that'd be the that would be an ideal plan i think i think that's a great compromise uh, to let restaurants keep selling. I think it's a fantastic compromise. So um, I think I might mention that to Vince, um, head of liquor authority, so maybe he can start that, that dialogue as well and reach out to some reach out to some people and maybe make that happen. So um, that's on my list of stuff to do today. Uh, and that is it, folks. Everybody have a great day. I got to get to the house now. I got the pool guys there. I got the, the electrician there putting up another AC unit and um, got to go supervise that and then go out for a bike ride and we are open tonight at five o'clock five o'clock we're open um scallop risotto um it's been a massive hit on our menu um so we sold a lot of porterhouses lately i gotta restock up on porterhouses and cowboy steaks those are a really nice uh steak that, that we're out of right now um, we don't sell too well we haven't put it on our menu too often but we put it back on um and that is it folks Hope everybody has an amazing day. Um, drop a comment if you're tuning in here. Um, share this with uh, somebody who bakes bread at home uh, or loves to bake bread, who wants to bake bread. And um, have a great day.